Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you know that Flipside Gaming will be giving away a box of War of the Spark. From April 1st through May 6th, any order that's over $10 or more will get you entered to win. One entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Today finds us back in New Jersey with the Jersey Boys. I am playing the angry and arboreous Animar, keeping Birds of Paradise, Peregrine Drake, Carplusion Forest, A Forest, Misty Rainforest, Beast Whisperer, and Ancient Ziggurat. Trevor is playing the friend of the Fae, Freilies, keeping a Green Sun Zenith, Priest of Titania, Elvish Mystic, Cavern of Souls, Nykthos, Elvish Champion, and A Forest. Mike is rocking his menacing and mysterious Mirko Voss deck, keeping an Evolving Wilds, an Island, a Watery Grave, a Silent Blade Oni, Gaslord of the Fuge, Shimmy Inspector, and Shadow of Doubt. And lastly, Matt is playing the noble native of Ravnica, Niv Mizzet, keeping a Mystic Retrieval, Chromatic Lantern, Windfall, Desolate Lighthouse, a Mountain, and an Island. I win the die roll, and I start us off. I play an Ancient Ziggurat, and tap it for one green, casting a Birds of Paradise, and passing a Mike. Mike plays an Evolving Wilds, cracking it and passing a Trevor. Trevor plays a Forest and casts an Elvish Mystic before passing to Matt. Matt plays an Island and passes. I play a Forest and live the dream with a turn 2 Animar, passing to Mike. Mike plays an Island and passes. Trevor plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Elves, and he casts an Elvish Archdruid. The spell resolves and he passes to Matt. Matt plays a Mountain and casts a Merchant Scroll. Mike has his new toy, Shadow of Doubt, ready, and denies Matt the search while also drawing a card. I draw and play a Carplusion Forest. I cast a Beast Whisperer with all of my mana, and Animar gains a plus one plus one counter as I cast the Elf. I then hit Matt for two with Animar, and I pass to Mike. Mike plays a Swamp, and drops Virtus the Veiled. Trevor plays a Forest, and brings out a Priest of Titania. He still has enough mana to cast Freilies, which he does, and he upticks her to make an Elf Druid, before passing to Matt. Matt plays his Desolate Lighthouse, and casts a Chromatic Lantern. He then passes to me. I play my Misty Rainforest, cracking it and taking one to find a Tropical Island. I then cast a Peregrine Drake, giving Animar another plus one plus one counter as I cast it, and also drawing a card from the Beast Whisperer. The Drake enters, and I get to untap my lands. I didn't draw anything of value though, so I'm sad to pass. Mike plays a Watery Grave untapped, taking two. I bring to Mike's attention my pro-black Animar as a means to persuade him not to swing Virtus at me. He instead swings him at Matt as he's the only real target, and Matt takes the hit, then drops to 18. In Mike's second main phase, he casts a Liliana's Reaver, and passes to Trevor. Trevor asks if I have a forest, which I do, and am immediately concerned. He drops his Elvish Champion, and upticks Freilies to make another token. He then drops Nykthos as his land for turn, and taps his Arch Druid to help activate Nykthos, and ends up with 11 floating green mana. He casts Green Sun Zenith where X is 7, and Mike is kicking himself now for blowing the Shadow of Doubt so early. Trevor grabs a Regal Force, and as it enters, draws 7 cards, i.e. a fresh new hand. With the 3 floating green that remain, Trevor casts an Azuri, and discards down to 7 before passing turn. Matt has nothing to do but play a Mountain, and pass. I play a Hinterland Harbor, and I'm kind of flooding out. I lose one life from the Carplusion Forest to help cast a Kiki Jiki. 
and I draw a card from the cast, as well as giving Animar another plus one plus one counter. The card I drew is Sylvan Library, which should in theory help me find some action, and I decide to move to combat. I hit Mike with Animar for four, and then pass my turn. Mike draws, and isn't too thrilled with what's going on either side of him. He decides to keep his man in reserve, and just passes. Trevor down takes Fraley's on his main phase, counting up his board, and draws eight cards. He then casts a Findhorn Elves, and activates Nykthos for 14 green. He uses 5 of it to cast Nyssa Vital Force, and uses her plus 1 to untap Nykthos and have it become a creature. He then casts a Beast Whisperer, and then a Lanowar Elves, drawing from the Beast Whisperer trigger. He then casts a Farhaven Elves, drawing as he casts it, and then finding a basic as it enters. We then see a Soul Ring, because clearly he's behind on mana right now, and he taps the ring to make another 20 green mana with Nykthos. Trevor then drops a Reclamation Sage, drawing first from the Whisperer, and then blows up my library. He then casts a Draga Warcaller, kicking it a modest three times. He draws a card once more, and we then see a Quirion Ranger, drawing Trevor another card, and at this point he's giving Blue a run for its money in sheer draw power. He still somehow has enough to cast a Terastodon, and he still hasn't even tapped the Archdruid or the Priest, drawing on cast. He decides not to blow anything up with the Terastodon trigger since he's digging at this point and doesn't want to make enemies needlessly. He's running a Nykthos mana though, so he taps the Priest for 14 green. We then see a Wood Elves hit the stack, with Trevor drawing before finding a Forest card. Trevor then casts Growing Rites of Itlamok, and for once Trevor doesn't get to draw from one of his spells this turn. Instead, he gets to reveal a Soul of the Harvest and put it to hand, subtly different. Trevor then casts the Soul, drawing from the cast trigger for the Beast Whisperer. He cycles to the Desert of the Indomitable and draws another card. Trevor then casts a Crop Rotation, sacrificing a Forest to go and find Gaia's Cradle. He finally plays his land for turn, a Mutavault, and taps it, activating it, and has it become basically an Elf. This lets him tap his Cradle for 19 green, bringing him back up to 20 green floating. He then casts the 3 mana draw 2 cards green spell, also known as Color of the Claw, and then drops Green Sun Zenith onto the stack, having redrawn it at some point, which makes sense considering how many cards he has in his hand, and he puts 8 into the X. Matt thankfully has a counter for it with Muddle the Mixture. This does little to slow Trevor down though, and he casts Coat of Arms after binning the Green Sun. He then uses the Quirion Ranger's ability to untap his Priest of Titania after returning a forest to his hand. Moving to combat, we start counting up all the pumps and the lords. Trevor decides to swing the champion and two tokens at me, and the mystic at Matt, and the priest, Izuri, and force at Mike. Mike uses sudden spoiling to help stem the loss of life, and Trevor's elves lose some of their power and toughness, only gaining about plus 16 plus 16 just from the coat of arms. I make a pretty critical mistake blocking one of the elf tokens with Kiki Jiki, and I take the rest dropping to 6 while Matt can't block and drops to 2. Mike blocks both the Priest and Azuri, taking only 2 damage. Trevor then passes, and at the end of turn, transforms his growing rights into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. He also has to discard down to 7. Matt draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Windfall, and with the wheel in the stack, Trevor casts Heroic Intervention, out of fear that a forthcoming Blasphemous Act is coming shortly after. We then draw six new cards, and Matt casts a Frantic Search. Trevor responds once he gains priority, and he casts a Kindred Summonings. He chooses Elves, and gets to reveal until he hits 14 Elves. He only hits 8, because that's all that's left in his library, and he draws a bunch as they enter, from both the Soul's Enter the Battlefield trigger, and in the case of the Elvish Visionary, its own Enter the Battlefield trigger. We get to see all of the draws because the Oracle will die is on the field. And Marwing also gains a bunch of plus one plus one counters as all the elves enter at the same time. Matt then draws his two cards, discards two, and untaps three lands. He then continues to dig, casting a Faithless Looting, drawing two more and discarding two more. Trevor isn't done though, 
and using some of the floating mana from his Itlamok before the phase changes, casts a Court of Calling where X is 6. He finds and dumps Thunderfoot Bailoth onto the field, and we then move to my turn. I draw for turn and play an island. I cast the card I drew, Survival of the Fittest, and things are looking up. But Matt swan songs it in what I can only imagine is the second greatest betrayal since Brutus and Julius Caesar. He even gives the bird token to me as it means to rub salt in the gaping wound that is my trust. Dismayed and disheartened, I cast a cloud of fairies, drawing as I cast it, and then untapping two lands. I then drop a Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, drawing another card on cast and pumping Animar by another plus one plus one counter. I then move to combat, and in an act of protest, hit Trevor for two with my Peregrine Drake, and I then pass to Mike. All hope lies on Mike to draw a board wipe, and either he's slow rolling us at this point, or he hasn't got one as he drops a reflecting pool. He then casts a soul ring, and brings up Mirko Vosk. Oh yeah, we're super dead. Trevor draws, and plays a Yavimaya Hollow off the top. His board is a massive unstoppable cardboard at this point, and he casts a Soul of New Phyrexia, drawing as he casts it. He then makes his board indestructible, just in case, and we all conceded Trevor's unstoppable elves. Game review time. So, I'm pretty sure you're asking me why did I bother to run this game? Trevor seemed to be running the show since basically turn 3. Personally, I think it's important to showcase these kind of games where a well-tuned deck can go off very early. I say go off in the sense of drawing a bunch of cards, gaining a ton of mana, and expanding his board state, but Trevor was in a pretty precarious situation for at least one turn, as he wasn't able to finish us off thanks to a sudden spoiling. This left him particularly vulnerable, especially to something like a Blasphemous Act, and the fact that Mike was running black, so he had an abundance of board wipes, potentially. I guess what I'm trying to say is that even though Trevor's deck was doing very well and had a lot of expensive cards in it, he still could have easily lost. For instance, had I been able to resolve the survival of Fittest, which I'm still super salty about Matt, thanks a lot, I think I probably could have given him a good run for his money. Unfortunately for me, my lines of play this game were particularly loose, and doing something like blocking with Kikijiki as opposed to making a token copy of a Peregrine Drake or something and blocking with that instead was pretty bad. I have to say this is probably due to the fact that I was very tilted by that point in the game, having drawn a bunch of lands from my Beast Whisperer triggers and not any gas. That's just the way the cookie crumbles though. Unfortunately for Matt and Mike, they really weren't able to contribute much to the game since Trevor was able to ramp so far ahead in terms of mana, and I was able to ramp ahead in terms of reducing the cost of my creatures. Mike did a good job of playing reactive spells and dealing with attack steps, while Matt did a good job of countering spells that would possibly win other players the game. Unfortunately in both of their cases, they were surrounded by two particularly well-positioned players, and that meant that they couldn't really forward their board states and instead had to keep their mana up for responses against them. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.